Good morning, everybody. Uh, so today I figured I would make um, some homemade cough drops. We're gonna make homemade honey lemon ginger cough drops. It's actually quite dingy and gloomy outside. So um, the seasons are changing, it's almost winter. So we're gonna make some homemade cough drops. So I have my pot on the stove here. So we need about a cup of honey. So I'm gonna fill my little measuring cup here. This is something that you probably need a candy thermometer with, but if you do not have one, um, I would say to use um, cold water to test to make sure that it's at the hard crack stage. Okay. See if I can get it out with this. Yes. So we're going to be cooking this mixture to 300, between 300 and 310 degrees. That is the hard candy crack stage uh, to make our cough drops. <laughs> Okay, so now I need about four teaspoons. The teaspoons? Let me see. Let me check the recipe. Tablespoons. Good thing I looked. So four tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm using um, organic lemon juice here. This is my favorite brand. I use it for uh, canning a lot as well. This kind here. You can use whatever kind you want though. And then two teaspoons of ginger. Teaspoon. I have ginger paste here. I didn't really want to ground up uh, normal ginger. <laughs> Fresh ginger, I mean. Um, so I decided to buy ginger paste. It was a little bit easier to handle and deal with. So I have this on medium heat. I might turn it down a little bit because I this does have to cook for a while to bring it up to 310 degrees. So I don't want it to, to burn. So I'm going to hook up my Kenny thermometer in the side of the pot here. Oh, my pot's too short. So I'm just going to test it thoroughly throughout the process here. Okay. Oh, this smells good. Okay. So I looked at several different recipes. This one does not have cinnamon in it. Um, quite a few of the others did. So I'm going to stick a little, little tiny pinch of cinnamon in this. Let me see if I can find my cinnamon. There it is. So like the tiniest pinch, because I don't want it to be too overpowering, but add a little bit of flavor. I have made these before. They work great. I've also made something similar to like a cough syrup with this before. That was really good too. It's in a previous video if you'd like to watch it. Oh, this smells good. I just kind of want to taste the mixture before it gets too hot here. Make sure it has good flavor. I like it quite lemony, so I might add a little bit more lemon. That's good. I think I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit more lemon though. Just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to turn this down because I do not want this to burn. Okay, so I'm going to cook this until it gets to the hard crack stage. I'm going to give you a close up look here. So this is something that I would recommend stirring constantly. Um, don't leave it sit. You're going to get burnt chunks and then it's going to taste disgusting. So make sure you're stirring it the entire time. So when we're close to the hard crack stage, I will come back and I'll show you the rest. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update 
Hopefully you can see my thermometer here. I just realized that my thermometer only goes up to 200 degrees Celsius. Um, it needs to be 300 degrees Fahrenheit down here. So once it reaches here, about between here and here, um, we're going to put it into these molds here. I have some silicone molds. Uh, I've made chocolates and stuff like that, so I'm going to use these. But if you do not have molds, um, you can use parchment paper. Just mm -hmm. drop little droplets on the parchment paper, let them set, and you're good. So once this is a little bit closer to temperature, we'll take it off. Okay, we're getting really, really close. We're at about just over 250. I think I'm going to do this to 310 just to make sure they're nice and hard. Um, it's getting to be like a really nice golden color, dark golden color. Really nice. Um, I was just doing some research and you don't have to grease uh, silicone molds for hard candy like this. It shouldn't stick to it. Um, so yeah. I thought I might have to grease them, but you don't. Um, last time I did this on parchment paper, but since then I have these really cute molds. So I'm gonna use these cute molds. <laughs> okay guys, so it's done. It's a dark brown stage. This is what color it's supposed to be. I did check the recipe to make sure. It's like a dark brown color. Okay, so we need to be quick and get these into the molds. So I have little starfish and turtles and stuff or I have these plain ones. I think I'm gonna try these ones. I think I'm probably only gonna have enough for one of these molds, but we'll see. I brought out two just in case. Just, I'm just mixing up the foam, that's what I'm doing right now. It's a nice dark, rich color. Don't want that to stick to my counter. Okay. I'm going to spoon this in with a teaspoon here, just so it's not so messy. Hopefully, that's the plan. Some of these little molds are quite big, so some of them I'm only gonna fill a little bit, and some of them I'll fill all the way. These little circle ones are quite shallow. Last year I made chocolates in these for Christmas for my little Christmas boxes that I do every year for my family and friends. Be super careful, this is really hot. I'm sure this would give a third degree burn if you got it on your skin. <laughs> so be very careful. I'm a little messy at the moment, but I'll clean it up in a minute. The last time I made these, these were a big hit in our family. They taste delicious. After we let these harden, we're going to uh, package them. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use powdered sugar or if I'm going to use parchment paper. We'll see what they look like after they're done. Um, you can use either or. It says you could use cornstarch. Uh, potato starch, arrowroot starch, or powdered sugar to make sure they don't stick together if you want to stick them in a jar or something. Or you can individually package them. Okay, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to fill a couple of these. Let's do a couple turtles. I think the turtles in these molds are super cute. I couldn't remember if you could put hard candy right into silicone, but you can. You don't need to grease it first. I figured I should make sure before I put it in, otherwise I'll never get it out. Oh, it's starting to harden in the pot already. So like I was saying, if you don't have a candy thermometer, um, you can test it using cold water. And if it gets really, really hard, you're at the right stage. 
And if you don't have candy molds, you can put this on parchment paper. Okay, see it's already hard cracked. Really, really hard. Okay, so I'm gonna let these harden thoroughly. It shouldn't take long. And uh, then we'll come out and demold them together and mix them in some powdered sugar together. Okay guys, these are done. So I'm gonna use powdered sugar and then I'm gonna stick them in this jar that I have here. So let's try and pop these out. Hopefully I don't break them. Hopefully they just pop right out. Yes. They look like that. That's awesome. So I'm just gonna stick them right into this little bag with powdered sugar here. I figured powdered sugar is probably best, probably tastes the best on your palate. Nice and hard. They're the perfect crack stage of the candy here. Cough drops, not candy. I mean, it's got a lot of sugar in it, so it technically could be classified as candy. I wish I could find a mold with just these little tiny uh, swirls. They're really beautiful. Yeah, that works quite well. Okay. I hope you guys try this recipe. I, like I said, this is the second time I've made homemade cough drops. Um, they taste really well. They taste really good. I'm sure if you wanted to add other things like turmeric or anything like that to them, you probably could. But just keep in mind flavor because you're going to be sucking on these. <laughs> you don't want something that's pretty strong that you're not going to be able to suck on. If I had put these on parchment paper, as you can see, they're still quite sticky, but they are set perfectly. That's why we're sticking them in the powdered sugar so they don't stick together in the jar here. And I'm just going to pour all of them right into the jar, and I'll probably pour the powder in too, just so that I can keep mixing the powder up onto them if needed. While I was waiting for these to cool, I made sure I soaked all of the pot and the utensils so that it doesn't take forever to get the to get the hard sugar off of them. It should dissolve in the hot water. Okay, let's try and get these turtles out. And get it out with breaking them. They are hard candy, so you don't want to push on them too much, otherwise they will break. Ooh, look at that. Turned out perfect. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I will definitely make these again. I usually make some at the beginning of the year, and then if I run out, I'll just make more. Cute. Oh, and then we did one starfish too. Let's see turned out perfectly too. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna loosely close this and coat everything with the sugar. <clears throat> just so they stay separated. They don't stick together. And then I think instead of taking them out individually, I think I'm gonna pour all of this and the sugar right into this jar here. Try to do this so I don't break them. Oh. There we go. And there we go. Homemade cough drops. Hope you enjoyed uh, making homemade cough drops with me and hope you are going to try the recipe because they're really good. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.